to Shay's Way. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my techniques on how to pay for college equestrian style. Or if you're not an equestrian, you can keep watching because you can do the same thing I'm doing, but with different things. And it's like whatever you're interested in that you don't need anymore, do what I'm about to do next. I'm showing you guys what I am selling because the way to get money and other than a job or working, you can also sell things that you don't need. And I have a lot of equestrian stuff that I don't need. So my mom cleaned a bunch of my equestrian stuff. To, so thank you to my mom because she's a queen like that. However, I have some bridles in here. They're old polo bridles that I don't use anymore. And they need to be put back together. My mom does not know how to do that. So we're gonna talk college and selling stuff while I put together a bunch of old polo bridles. Pray for me to see if I can remember how to do this. You guys, like my mom and I are watching Heartland right now. We're like obsessed with it. We're on season nine right now. And we're so close. I think there's a season 13 maybe or something, but we're getting close to the end. And so I was like, I'm gonna dress cowgirl style in honor of Heartland. Land. You're yeah. it up. No, we're cowgirling it. Cowgirling it up. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys see anything you're interested in, a little self promo here, then you guys can check out my Instagram at stories. I'm gonna sell it, do a little story sale on Shay's Way Official or Facebook. I'll be hosting it on like equestrian groups as well as my Facebook page, Shay's Way. Okay. Anyway, without further ado, let me show you how I am selling these things and what I'm selling. First off, these boots do not fit me anymore. These are my old show boots and they do not fit my thighs. My thighs too thick for them. But some of you guys may not have show boots to sell. But another thing you can sell just like show boots are old shoes that don't fit you. And how you can sell those is clean them up like my mom did. Make sure they look real nice. And then you sell them online through like Instagram, Facebook, Depop eBay even, just a bunch of other selling websites, but be careful for the scam websites. You don't wanna be scammed like that. These, by the way, these are my Ariots. They're Ariot black tall boots. So this is kind of like a mini how-to, as well as also like a, a selling haul. <laughs> so instead of doing a haul video where I get stuff, I'm doing a haul video where I'm not getting stuff, I'm giving it away and selling it. Yeah. And then another thing, this is an old girth that I used to use on Rocket and it is a Devico girth. I'm selling this because it's horse tack. So you guys can sell your horse tack, or in relation, let's say you're not doing horseback riding, you can sell sports equipment or stuff that you don't use anymore for whatever sport you do or gaming stuff. This is a De Rocket's Devico girth and it's super comfortable. It's really protected for the belly. My <laughs> heel thick boy grew out of it, so we gotta sell it. Okay, and these are kind of sad to sell, but it's time. But these are my old polo knee pads. I used to play polo, and these are my favorite knee pads ever. Let's say you were in Taekwondo and you had knee pads for Taekwondo, you could sell them. I don't even know, I'm just coming up with random examples at this point. But yeah, this is uh, another thing that I am selling. And these are really comfy. These are the comfiest knee pads in the entire universe. And somebody could whack you in the knee with a freaking mallet and you would not feel it. Actually, I've had many balls bounce on my knees that would normally hurt, but they don't hurt because knee pads. All of your knee pads, kids, if you're in polo, otherwise you're gonna break a kneecap. I'm selling my, whoa. I'm selling my old polo bit. So normally, normally I would keep fits because um, it's always good to have fits, but these are polo bits, so I can't really use them on Rocket because they're just too heavy for his mouth. They're just they're thick, you know? He does not be needing that. This one was, wait. Pelham. This one was Toasties. Yeah, it was a Pelham. Yes, this is a Pelham. And then this is a Snaffle Pelham, I think. Or no, no, it's not a Snaffle Pelham. I don't know what I'm saying. Is that okay? No, this is all, these are all Pelhams. It's a, this is Cookie Dough's Pelham. It's a lighter bit because it's, um, <laughs> I don't know anything about bits. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, this one. Oh, this is also cookie doughs. Cookie dough had two. This one's cookie doughs for sure. She had the lighter ones because she didn't take off on her riders. Okay, then these ones are jumper bits. This one's a little bit intense. I would never use it on Rocket. Um, I had to use it on Toasty at one point. She was a little psycho. <laughs> a little bit. She used to like to throw her head up and then she would like do this little like skit thing and you'd be like, are we falling over? And she'd be like, yes ma'am. 
So we had to use that on our phone, not for a long time, just for a little bit though. But this one's a little bit harder. It's a, like a, a D-ring, yeah, it's kind of a train thing. It's a D-ring something, yeah. Um, <laughs> You'll figure it out when you post it. I am, yeah, we'll figure it out when I post it. Always be informed about your products that you are selling. I'm the bad example no, of that. Bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then this is like a snappily bass something bit. Kind of a snapple, but it's not a snapple completely because it's not exactly a snapple, but it's lighter bit. And this was cookie dose. I know so much about bits, I'm so knowledgeable, wow. This is a curved chain, and curved chains are, all, are always used in polo or they can sometimes be used in jumping too. And now for what we've all been waiting for, let's build some bridles. So this is something that attaches to a polo bridle and it goes like, like that on the horse. I don't really remember what it's called or what its purpose is, but it attaches to the girth and I think it just like keeps the bridle together, you know? I don't know. These are reins, just regular reins, and they're clip-on reins, which, you know what, you don't even have to play polo to have clip-on reins. Clip-on reins are always just super nice and helpful. Three years since I played polo, so that like, long? yeah, 2017, oh right? So like before when I played polo, I knew everything. I'd be like, I know what that bit is, I know what that does, I know everything. I was like, I was such a knowledgeable expert and then I kind of lost it over the years and so now I'm like, where do I stick these things? <laughs> where are you? Oh, oh, hey, what are you? <laughs> oh, oh, it's got a, it's got a tang on it. Okay, this is the bit part. Okay. Oh, okay. This is gonna attach somehow. Part of the reins. This is the top reins. Okay, next thing. Okay, we have another. Oh, I remember what it's called now. It's called a breastplate. Breastplate. Yay. Oh, this is the martingale. So we have part of the polo bridle figured out. Yay. Yay. This is a lot of workout for me. Oh, oh, this is so funny. So Toasty one time took off and broke my bridle. And she broke this part of the bridle. And so we had to get a new one. But of course we couldn't get it in the black color, or the dark brown color. So we had to get it in the orange color. So she had like one part that was just like not the same color. And this is like the head. Goes, back goes on the, the crown. Neck. Yeah, behind like. Behind the head. Behind, behind the, the ears. Yeah. yeah. Behind yeah. The ear. What are you? <laughs> Like, where are you? Oh, it's a nose band. Okay, we found a nose band. <laughs> right? Yeah. This chain or wrist. I don't realize how big polo tack is until like you see it and you're like, that is actually large compared to jumping tack. Jumping tack is so light. Okay, so far we have a nose band. Litty. Coolness. Cool beans. And then this will go under the nose band like that. So this is a very expensive custom polo brow band by the brand Maasai Palm Beach. And it's really cool, it's pink. It was custom for Toasty, but it can be used on any horsey. So we're going to put, try to put it on this bridle and see if I remember how to do it. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> it only took hours, right? It only took three years. <laughs> Off your life. Off my lifespan. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, yeah. All right, now we have this piece done. And then the rest would be just the bridle, the attachment to the bits. So, you can't put it together? You can't really put that together because we need the bit attached to it. Oh. So we just have to sell it with the reins. Okay. But we got, okay, we have actually, wait, we have a full bridle done. Ooh, yay. Yeah. Period. Okay, so we have this, we have this, and then there would be the bit. And then there would be these reins which would attach to the bit. And then there would be the draw reins. Yay! We found draw reins. All right, and then the draw reins would also attach to the bit. So now we have a full polo bridle. Holy crappers. Okay, let's do assemble our next one. So we got this thing. Um, this is one is taped because it broke, but it's perfectly taped and it's kind of cute because it's red. So, I mean, it's not that bad. Definitely a little bit of a, you'll have to, if you have an item that is damaged, you will have to reduce the price. But it is damaged, so you can't sell something that's damaged for full price. Okay, another thing in my first seal haul is my old pink Debaco saddle. And this is so comfortable. Like, it's so comfortable. It's already, like, broken in even, so 
Yeah, pretty good. So anybody that buys this can be really nice. Look how cute it is. It does have some wear and tear from bad writing on the blocks, but other than that, it's doing fine. It's living its best life. Last thing I'm selling are my old Veritas boots. I have pink ones now, and these were on our old horse cookie dough. They say cookie dough's name on it. So if you guys ever have things that say your name on it, you can still sell it, but you have to disclose that your name is on it. And it is removable though, I think. Some alcohol you could take off Sharpie marker. I'm not sure about that one. So I'm gonna figure that one out. Um, and then I like the back pair as well. Anyway, you guys are probably like, how the heck do I sell it though? So like, I, you can say that you can post it on so social media, but how do you sell it? Well, the tricks to selling stuff is having a good description. People want to know what they're buying. You want to list any defaults or, of it, but you don't want to list too many defaults. Like things that wouldn't really bother you as a buyer, you don't want to list in the description unless somebody asks you about it. So if somebody be like, yo, is this a problem with it? Then you have to disclose it. You can't lie about it, but you don't have to write it in the description unless it's like a major defect and you have to disclose it. But if you're just selling something and maybe it has a scratch or two, you don't have to say, it has scratches. Instead, somebody can say, does it have scratches? And you can let them know, it does have scratches. Um, and then another thing is, so you have to have a good description, and then you want to have a catching title. So in the title, you want to have the name of the product in preferably all caps, and then um, some like fancy word describing it, like brand new, or, um, or, premium or vintage just like something that will catch the person's eye and be like hmm is this easy to get or not and try to make it not easy to get unless it is easy to get then you're just better off using the name of it and making sure you choose a good price now let's talk about pricing so for pricing it all depends if your item is brand new and it's let's see let's say your item is brand new in perfect shape and was expensive, you can make it maybe not the same price as you got it unless that item is not really sold anymore or is hard to get. If the item is hard to get and not sold anymore and it's brand new, then you can put it up a little bit higher. But if it's not, you can put it a little bit lower than the sales price, but you can still charge a higher price. However, if it's slightly used, you have to charge a little bit less. So let's say, I don't know, for example, let's say this bridal was $200 and it's the one that has the tape on it that I showed you earlier so let's say that I was trying to sell the bridal with the tape on it and like I bought it for $200 but I use it a lot I think I can maybe sell it for $75 just because that tape really takes away from the value of it or I could go to 100 but 150 is pretty hard to sell it at but the other bridal the one that's in fairly good shape I could probably get 100 or 150 for it because it doesn't have any defects and it comes with that amazing brow band. So actually, because of the brow band, I could say you could buy the brow band just separately, and they could buy the brow band for like 150 because it's in perfect condition, or if they want the whole bridal, then they could pay 200. And that's just an example. So you really just want to price it as a way that you're making money and not losing money. You want to make it fair to the buyer because if it's not fair to the buyer, they're not gonna buy it, they're gonna find whoever did make it fair, but you also have to make it fair to yourself. Comment down below any questions you have about that as well. Another thing you do is you do hashtags, hashtag it out on Facebook Marketplace. You do hashtags and that draws people that are looking for that item in. Or you can find Facebook groups. Facebook groups is a huge thing that I've been selling a lot of stuff on because people in the groups, you can go to an exact group where people are actually interested in this stuff, like um, horse network groups. And you can sell stuff and be like, hey, anybody want this? And then the chances are there could be a buyer on that group that's looking for exactly what you are selling and it's really freaking cool. So Facebook groups is actually huge. Like I really like Facebook groups. I find a lot of good stuff on Facebook groups like T-wise, Broadway-wise, like Facebook groups, it'd be rolling. I like, love that. Next thing you need is good pictures. So you can use your iPhone for it, but make sure you have good lighting and you show every part of the product that you are selling. So you have to have good pictures, you have to show everything. If you can't Photoshop any defects away from them because people need to see what you're they're really buying but you can make those pictures good you can make them good quality you can make it look better than it actually even is 
Once you have those pictures, you have a description, you got your title, you are ready to sell. So we're gonna sell it on Facebook, like as I said, Facebook groups. You can sell it on the Facebook marketplace, but you have to be careful because there is a lot of scammers out there, like a lot of scammers, and they will try to steal your money and make you do illegal things, which is scary. If you have anything higher than $200, or so don't sell it on the marketplace so anything expensive that you're selling do not sell it on the marketplace because there's just too many scammers another one is ebay ebay will take part of your commission fee as will facebook marketplace unless you use uh direct messages and you don't actually sell through facebook marketplace but ebay you have to sell through and they will take part of your commission and that's kind of like you lose a lot of money on there so it's like really kind of annoying so ebay i don't totally recommend unless you're like selling something that like is really like vintage or something like that, or just like an iPad, all those things. But you're honestly better off trying to find somebody on Facebook in your area that wants the same thing so you can get the full money. And then there's Depop, which also takes a fee as well. But Depop is really good for clothing. Like it's really hard to sell clothing on Facebook, I feel like, um, but Depop is like all about clothing. It's all about like, like accessories, all that stuff. So Depop is just for like fun stuff. I sell some stuff on Depop, so check out my Depop. It's called Shay's Way. And um, I'm selling some Doc Martens, so. And then there's Instagram. Um, you can sell things on your stories to your followers. So you post on your story and you say DM me for price or you put the price on there, whichever you want. You post your picture, you post different pictures and a little thing and people can DM you and you can work it out from there. So you can work it out. Um, if you the person does not live nearby to you and you don't know them, you can use PayPal. And if you're underage, then make sure your parents are involved. So you can use PayPal or Venmo or Cash App, whatever ca um, money app you use. But you have to make sure it's secure and safe. So always keep your parent with you if you are underage and you don't know um how to do it all then make sure that you are supervised so you don't get scammed yo because there's a lot of freaking scammers out there anyway you guys that is it that is how you can make some money by selling stuff i hope you guys enjoy this video and learn something from it i hope you guys enjoyed watching me struggle making a polar bridle but you know what i put two freaking polar bridles together two of them i'm impressed like honestly three years haven't done it for a while Anyway, thank you guys again so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to ring the bell because then you get notified when I post. I also have merch, so go check out my merch links down below. And I'm an affiliate with Asmar Equestrian. So use my affiliate link if you guys ever want to buy anything from Asmar Equestrian Apparel. Now, let's do some video shout outs. Shout out to The Baby Hans Show. Shout out to Mally Smith. Shout out to Ludovica. Shout out to Grace Brower. Shout out to Luna117 Pika. Shout out to Amaya Lukes. And now we're gonna shout out some people that were on my live. So shout out to Light Fury. Shout out to It's Me. Shout out to ABC Adventure Eventer. Shout out to Adam and Rosie. Shout out to Jeanette Hernandez. Shout out to Equine Divine. And last shout out goes to Jeremiah Downs. If you guys want to be the next video's video shout outs, then don't forget to comment on this video or any of my other videos. Or you can comment on my Instagram, Shay's Way Official, TikTok, Shay underscore C, Twitter, Shay's Way Slays, and Facebook, Shay's Way. Okay, thank you guys again so much for watching. Have a great day. Okay, bye!